My name is Stephanie Diaz Valerio. I am a PhD student at York Agus University in Göttingen, Germany. And today I would like to present to you IDOPS, a profile healing mark of a model based tool for identification and characterization of bacterial pesticidal sequences. This tool is developed by Anad Lefakoan, Rafael Chope, Heiko Lissigan, and me. So let me start my presentation. I would like to talk first about uh, bacterial pesticidal proteins, their relevance, classification, and hidden Markov models as an approach to identify them. As the title suggests, uh, the core of our tool is a collection of manually curated hidden Markov models. Therefore, I would like to share with you the strategy behind them, their validation, and some examples. This model collection was implemented in a tool that we call IDOPS, Identification of Pesticidal Sequences, and here I will compare it to other similar tools, describe its unique features and its workflow. So let's start with bacterial pesticide proteins. Here, um, probably the most uh, known ones are the, the toxins produced by Bacillus thuringiensis, the so-called Bt toxins. They are highly specific for their target, which usually those are insects, but as well other invertebrate pests have been targeted. They are as well regarded as non-toxic uh, for humans, and very importantly, uh, they represent an eco-friendly alternative to pest control options um, based on chemicals in crop protection strategies. So that is why Bt is one of the most successful biopesticides implemented worldwide. Moreover, it can also be used to control insect vectors of human diseases, like mosquitoes, for example. Nevertheless, uh, target pests are uh, developing resistant mechanisms. And therefore, there is always a constant need for novel pesticidal proteins to replace, supplement, and expand our current options for biopest control. Moreover, there are emerging pests that could potentially be managed if we expand our portfolio of available biopesticides. So, luckily for us, Bt is not the only bacteria interacting with insects as part of this, its lifestyle. So many other potential sources of pest control agents have been recognized. Here is a list of some of them uh, recognized by the Bacterial Pesticidal Protein Resource Centers as uh, sources of pesticidal proteins. This organization recently updated the nomenclature uh, from a system based on amino acid sequence identity to a classification based on protein structure. This makes uh, sense because it can be assumed that proteins sharing sequence homology are unlikely to exhibit similar structure configurations. So this new system offers a better approach to identify and characterize functional domains. So this is our current picture. We are faced against a great diversity of structures and source organisms of pesticidal proteins. Even more, the advancement in NGS technologies of the recent years has led to an explosion of sequences at the biological databases which means that we have in hand a promising reservoir of sequences with uncharacterized pesticidal potential. But to screen such, amount, such vast amount of data, we require sophisticated computational approaches, like here at Markov models, which have proven to be a robust and sensitive strategy to describe and analyze biological data, as they condense the information of a multiple sequence uh, alignment of homologous uh, proteins they have a higher discriminative power than pairwise similarity based tools like BLAST, for example. So this is great because it allows us to identify remote homologies even from such a diverse group of proteins. So when we are modeling pesticidal sequences, we came to a question of how many sequences are required to create a good model. And to answer it, there are several factors that have to be taken into account, and each of them depend on each group specifically. So we look, for example, into the phylogenetic relationships between the sequences, their source organisms, the domain signatures as predicted by Interpro, and as well, um, we had a look at the composition bias within each group. So this is very important to consider. For example, in the case of the cryotoxin class, it is one of the most studied ones, and it has more than 700 members, ranking from CRY1 to CRY79. Nevertheless, more than 270 of those correspond exclusively to CRY1 sequences, meaning that a model created with all of the class members would be overrepresenting CRY1 over other, variation of the, uh, other variations of the three domain toxins. So 
taking into account these ideas, every candidate model uh, that we developed for IDOPS was tested against a collection of a true positive um, sequences. The, in this case, it was the collection from the Pesticidal Protein Research Center, a collection of true negatives. In this case, it was um, a collection of unrelated uh, other poor forming toxins from different bacteria. And finally, we tested the discriminative power of the models by scanning the whole Uniprot database and analyzed the distribution of the matches that, it was the, that were returned. This was an iterative process as many models require multiple rounds of refinement and testing. At the end, we selected a balanced set of sequence to represent each, each group with the following validation criteria. A, model, a good model must identify all true positives from the official collection, none of the true negatives. There must be no overlap between the sequences matched by the different models. And when scanning the Unipro database, the matches in the high score range must be consistent with the targeted structural group. And the distribution of those matches should reflect some discrimination between the target class members and the rest of the proteins. This evaluation allows us to define trusted cutoff values for each model, meaning that proteins scoring above certain value could be considered as positive hits. So the final model collection of IDOPS consists of 32 hidden Markov models. You may ask at this point, why are there more models than structural classes? And the reason is that uh, during the refinement process, we realized that there is a high diversity within some of the groups. And in order to be able to produce sensitive and specific models, some of them have to be subdivided and modeled independently. So here, this is a description of the additional models that we created. So let me give you some examples. Again, for the cry group, it has been reported since the 90s that even though they all have the, or they all present the classical three domains of the toxins, um, there is a variation within the conserved sequence blocks as in some cases, uh, they, they can be short pair, they can be absent, or they can um, be present as an alternative versions of, of the classical uh, blocks. Therefore, it made sense to have dedicated models to describe these subgroups. Uh, moreover, some of these toxins, as you can see in the image, present a C-terminal extension, which is believed to play a critical role in stabilization and protein crystallization. So we also created a model specifically for this extension, and this allow us to identify independent instances of this extension that sometimes is coded in the proximity of the shorter sequence um, of, of the shorter variants. Here's another example from the seed group. What you can see here is the distribution of the proteins matched by the model when we scan the Unipro database. In red is a trusted cutoff, and what you can see here is that the model is specific for proteins produced by decaya. Historically, seed toxins have been associated with bacillus. Nevertheless, with the recent update, it was recognized that decaya was also able to produce them. Nevertheless, despite of belonging to the same structural class, these new toxins have some differences when compared to the uh, BT counterparts, as they lack of hemolytic activity, they have shorter end terminal regions, and they can be produced within the cell without displaying bacterial cell toxicity and without the need of a helper gene. So again, it made sense to have a separated model for this subgroup. Also, what is nicely shown here is uh, the discriminative power of the model, as it allows a clear separation between the target and the rest of the database. Another example is uh, from this model targeting the PRA toxin produced by Photohablus and Senorhablus. Interestingly, you can see um, here that some proteins from the Arsenia scored directly below our trusted cutoff. It has been reported that Yersinia shares insecticidal potential with Fortohardus luminescence, as homologous proteins with similar genetic arrangement ha has been found, perhaps as a result of horizontal gene transfer events. So the sequences over here might represent related variants of the PRA toxin. Moreover, this PRA toxin is part of a two-component toxin, we observe a similar distribution for the model targeting the B component of the toxin, meaning that perhaps Yersinia is able to produce the A and B elements of the toxin. This kind of a scenario opens the door to ask questions about the evolutionary processes that shape a protein class and how our toxins develop. 
overall, uh, there is a huge diversity of sequences to be explored. Here, there is a summary of matches uh, retrieved by IDOPS when we scan Uniprot database. As you can see, there are many candidate proteins for each structural class. Also, there are groups with many more potential members than others, as they have been less described. So an advantageous feature of IDOPS is that it can help to fill up this gap and enrich those less studied groups. How does IDOPS stand regarding other available tools for toxin identification? Well, we benchmark it against CRY processor, which also uses HMMs for toxin identification and against BT toxin Giga, the successor of BT toxin scanner that uses support vector machine, HMMs and BLAST for toxin prediction. CRY processor focuses on three domain CRY sequences and allows accurate domain delimitation. And moreover, it can search directly on raw sequencing data. Similarly, BT toxin digger accepts uh, multiple forms of input data and offers multi-thread support for large datasets. Nevertheless, here the models are built on a greedy approach, meaning that all sequences of each class were used to create the models. And as I mentioned before, this approach has some disadvantages when modeling this kind of proteins, given the composition bias within the groups. Besides the high quality model collection, there is another feature that makes IDOPS unique, a function to analyze the genetic environment of a toxin. So this is relevant because it allows to describe the whole expression unit. So we can identify the elements required for optimal toxin expression, such as regulators, crystallization domains, chaperones, and besides other accessory components like mobile elements, transporters, prophages, and virulence factors. The arrangement of these elements in different genomes can reveal cru crucial information about functionality, host adaptation, diversification, and evolution of the pesticidal proteins. Here is an example that we used to validate this function. We gave IDOPS uh, these plasmids, and it was able to identify and generate a visual representation of a CRY1 cassette that was previously reported. So this is the workflow of IDOPS. It can take in uh, protein sequences in FASTA format or as part of a gene bank file. It runs HMM scan and evaluates the resulting scores against the defined uh, trusted cutoffs values for each model. Then it generates a list of candidate pesticidal proteins. Those proteins are aligned with the other members of the structural class and the closest sequences reported, along with a tree with the 10 closest proteins. If multiple GBKs are provided, IDOPS extracts and annotates the upstream and downstream regions of the coding gene. Then it does a clustering based on annotation and creates an easy fix visualization. IDOPS is available over Conda and over GitHub and it's under constant development. So as a summary, we develop IDOPS, a tool for identification of pesticidal sequences, which allows a detection based on a curated set of profile hidden Markov models. It offers basic classification according to the latest structure-based nomenclature and provides a model for comparative genomic analysis. In the future, we would like to develop IDOPS as a tool uh, on an online server for uh, the scientific community. Moreover, given the large amount of sequences that we can identify, we want to investigate if it could be possible to create a model, a model for toxin target prediction and keep studying how target specificity is developed. And with that, I would like to conclude my talk and thank you all for your attention. Uh, with a special thank you uh, to my co-authors, to the team of the Gottingen Genomics Lab and the Department of Gen Genomic and Applied Microbiology for hosting this project. I would be happy to hear your suggestions and um, answer your questions. Thank you very much.